Okay, welcome back everybody to our second lecture on uh, PC310, Church and Ministry Management. We have been talking about volunteer management and um, we're continuing that. Um, Tiffany, you have a question to ask? Right. Um, so when we studied about the staffs, uh, when something goes wrong, we have you were telling about the three strike policies. Uh, that's how you do it. So, what's the case of volunteers? If you notice <laughs> something is happening with the volunteers, uh, how do you actually correct it? And uh, uh, we we can't say everyone will actually take the corrections and change it. So, how the conflicts in in a volunteer uh, sector actually happens, and how do we solve it? Hmm. Yeah, good question. Good question again. So, church staff, you know, we have, like we said, like you mentioned, uh, we have this three strike rule. We, you know, three times, then we have to see what action to take and so on. Volunteers, uh, we have to, so what, at least the way we work at APC is, even with volunteers, we are strict. So, you know, the thing is this, uh, volunteers, we did not want volunteers to have the mindset that, hey, I'm coming and doing something for free, so you cannot tell me anything. We did not want them to have that attitude. You know, because then that is a very unhealthy attitude, right? So we said, even so, right from the beginning, uh, what we tell them is, if you are a volunteer, you are a volunteer. We respect that, but we expect you to operate at this level. That means there has to be commitment, and you have to work in a certain way. That means uh, you have to work with excellence. If there is preparation, you have to do your preparation and come. Uh, we are striving for excellence in everything. Even if you're a volunteer, this is what we expect. And if you're not able to meet this, then we will have to release you. And you try and do something else that does not require the same level of commitment. Example, example, you know, for those who want to volunteer in the worship team, the level of uh, our requirement is very high. That means, the example I'm just saying, um, before, uh, before, so the, the, the song, you know, the, the song, the worship leader for that particular Sunday will send out the set list saying, look, we are going to practice, we're going to come prepared with these five songs. We're going to do these five songs on Sunday. So the, the people who are rostered for that Sunday, they must learn the five songs. They must practice their part in the five songs, and depending on which instrument they are playing. They should come re already prepared for the practice. So before the practice, they have done their preparation. So which may, for example, depending on their skill level, it may take about one hour. Or if you know, sometimes they may take even two hours, depending on how skilled they are. That means they have practiced for one or two hours before coming to the team practice. So the team practice may happen on a Saturday, for example, or it may happen Sunday morning, one hour or one and a half hours before the service, so whenever it's scheduled. But for most locations, the, the team practice will happen on Saturday. So before these people come to the team practice, they have already spent about one or two hours doing their part, practicing their part for those five songs. Then they come for the team practice. Team practice, the team is practicing all the five songs together. And that will be for one and a half, one or two hours, depending on when they practice. So that commitment is there. If you cannot, if you don't come for team practice, you cannot play on Sunday. You can't just show up on Sunday and say, I'm playing. No, you have to be there for the team practice. Then on Sunday, you have to come early before the service. Sound check has to happen. You know, everybody. So that so you can't even just show if the service is starting at eight o'clock in the morning, you can't show up at eight. You have to show up at seven thirty. 
to, because the sound check has to happen, all those things have to happen. So the commitment is a little higher. That means for, to sing on Sunday morning, you have actually spent about, you know, roughly about three hours, three to four hours of practice before you can, you know, lead, be a part of the worship team on Sunday. That's going to lead for about 40 minutes. So four hours of, I'm just roughly giving an estimate, four hours of practice has gone in for that person to be part of the worship team for 40 minutes. But that's the commitment that's required. Now, if they don't do this, and we've had to, and we just say, sorry, you cannot. You know, if the person comes without practicing, they'll just say, hey, sorry, you cannot be part of this. So, uh, so at, at least at APC, what we have done here is we have created a culture where even if you're a volunteer, we are expecting you to do it well. We are expecting you to do it with excellence. If you can't do it, don't volunteer. Nobody's forcing you to volunteer. If you can't do it well, don't volunteer. So the uh, the consequence of not doing and not coming on time, not being committed, not doing something with passion and excellence as a volunteer is we will release you from the opportunity to volunteer. Thank you very much. Like that, you know. So, uh, and and again, we apply the same thing. That is, you know, we'll first we'll give a warning. We'll talk to hey, you're supposed to come at eight o'clock. You came at eight thirty. See what happened. Then, or you came without practicing, or you were not doing it properly. You know, one or two warnings. And if they still continue like that, it's okay, please sit down. Whenever you're ready, you can. Or you serve in some area where the requirement is not uh, that stringent, you know, where time commitment is not. So we have to be strict with volunteers also. And I remember, actually, this is a very bad thing that happened. Um, I try to remember which year it was. Um, so, Again, I'll go back to our worship team. Um, one of the requirements that we had put down for our worship team, and all this is in writing also, that if you are part, so you have, first of all, you have to be committed to the local church before you can volunteer in the any team. You have to be committed. To so first, that's the first requirement. You have to be committed to the, the local church. Then you can volunteer in the church. And if you're volunteering, you also need to be faithful to attend the services. And especially for the worship team, there was a time when we had uh, people in the worship team, they used to come to church only on the Sundays they were rostered to lead worship. Other Sundays they'd be missing. They won't even come to church. So we observed this. Then I spoke with our worship pastor. I said, see, this is very obvious. These people, and like we, there was, I'm not saying the whole worship team, but certain people, they would come to church only on the Sunday. So when they were going to lead worship, other Sundays they're missing. They're not even coming to church. Then I said, please talk to them. You know, I remember, you know, so we, you know, even as, so he spoke to them, nothing changed. Then I got involved, I stepped in. I spoke to them. I said, see, you know, we require commit, commitment to the congregation. Before you can be up on stage and lead worship, you must be committed to this body. That means you've got to be here and listening. Plus, the other thing we noticed is sometimes they will lead worship. After worship is over, they'll be outside the church. They won't be sitting inside listening to the message. So we made a requirement. After you lead worship, you must be seated on the front row. Right? You can't be just loitering around outside no no no. this is not you're not coming to just do a show this is part of worship and you need to be receiving the word of god you need to be up in front so we made these you know these things uh and this was a season now things are very different today but we went through this uh, i think this was back in 20 2011 or 12, I forget which year, which years this was. We went through this. So then 
so we, we you know we were speaking to the worship team especially a few people not all but few people were you know kind of they're not taking their commitment to the church seriously so finally i called those people separately to the church office one saturday i remember that meeting we had just those people i didn't call the whole worship team i called those people and then i spoke to them along there was a worship pastor others with them so i said see this will not continue and these were experts. I mean, like they were very good musicians. Like one person who was sitting there was, um, you know, was like India famous. You know, like he was a lead guitarist. He was uh, so renowned all of, in India, like that level of musicians. They were, you know, they were all sitting there. I said, see, this in church, if you're going to come and lead worship, you need to be coming. And they, this is not the first time I'm talking to them. We've talked to them many, many times. But this was like the last meeting. Like, this is serious. I called these few people in, along with Roshan Bas and a couple of others. I said, this is the issue. You, know, you have to be in church. If you cannot be in church, please step down from worship team. We don't want to. You know, we're not asking people to come and do a show for us. That's not what we want. And, uh, you know, so we went through the whole thing. After that meeting, that whole group left. They left the church. Now, these were, you know, among our best, you know, uh, worship musicians, all that. I mean, not the whole thing, but there were three of a handful of them. The whole group, they left the church. Now, one, I felt very sad because that was not the reaction or the response I wanted from them. You know, that I'm not telling them to leave the church. I'm just saying, hey, there's a proper way in which you volunteer, in which you serve. That is, your commitment must be first to the local church. You should be here every Sunday receiving the word of God. Then you can be up on stage to lead worship. Talent wise, they're very great, they're famous. They didn't be invited all over the country, etc. People they well known, but this is what we required. That was it. That was like the last meeting I had. They left. They stopped coming. Then I said, "It's okay. I mean, I've done my part." And you know, so so to answer your question, you know, and and, and the thing is, is that uh, we have to be strict and. Uh, Sometimes this happens where when we correct, even volunteers, they may leave the church. But that is not the intent. We're not sending them out of the church. We are saying, you're a volunteer, but we have certain commitments. We have certain standards. And uh, we will live by that. We will abide by that. And um, even in the pastoral side, you know, like, for example, we had we have a policy here that if you're a pastor, you should not engage in any financial dealing with anybody in the congregation. You know, so that's something I should keep telling our pastoral team. Hey, you're a pastor, you want to do business or whatever you want to do it outside, but don't enter into any kind of financial dealing with any person in the congregation. Starting from me, you know, even I will not engage, you know, especially the time when I was running a business. Within the congregation people, I will not. You know, we will work with people outside, but not because the problem is as a you know, if you engage with people in the congregation, something goes wrong, it'll affect the relationship in the church. Problem is happening with the business, you know, some business dealing, something else. But something goes wrong there, it'll affect here. So I so say just keep away from this. Then um, that time that we, we did have a pastoral couple. Um, they got involved financially uh, with uh, you know, some people in the church. It was a big mess, big mess. And uh, I had to, you know, to, I had to make a change. But then when I made the change, they left the church. The pastoral couple was part of our pastoral team. But I had to do it because this was our clear guideline. 
you know, part of the pastoral team, you must not engage financially with people at the congregation because of this reason, you know, and it actually happened. They got in financial role, it became such a big mess. It was so such a problem. And I had to sit and, you know, try to sort it out and all those things. But uh, so um, uh, we have to be careful, you know, in these areas. For whether they're volunteers or we have to have guidelines and follow those guidelines. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Pastors and leaders. Mm. Pastor and receive them all and kindness. That's not all that. If, um, so if we have pastors and leaders who, you know, without informing us, they go and visit people's homes. So uh, here we don't mind. Like we don't, we actually, I don't even know who goes visits whom, you know, I don't know. Uh, and we don't mind, like, you know, uh, our own pastors, our pastoral team, then we have a member care team. They will go and visit and meet people and all, and I don't care. I mean, I don't, like, I, uh, I'm going to say I don't care, means I'm not thinking about it and I'm not involved. And I don't ask. And we don't have a policy such that where they have to inform me everything. They don't inform me about everything. No, no. They're free to go and visit whoever, whatever happens. Uh, even among people in the congregation, our life group leaders, member care pass, they all go and visit and they have good time. And we're very happy about that. Only thing, if there is any kind of anything goes wrong and news comes, then I will ask. You know, like if somebody goes and keeps asking money from other people or, uh, you know, something goes wrong. Usually the news will come, uh, so and so. Then I would definitely ask. Otherwise, I'm, I don't even know what's happening in terms of who's visiting whom. Yeah. So there's complete freedom that way. But as long as everything is done properly, it's fine. Only when something goes wrong, then we have to step in. Yeah. All right. So let's move forward. In our understanding here about volunteer management, just get into some of the practical things that we do here. Um, on page 31, so when we are getting new volunteers on board to join the teams, of course, there's an orient orientation process. Uh, we welcome new volunteers. You know, we introduce them to their teams, and usually various volunteer teams have their own whatsapp groups now a lot of the, a lot of this coordination happens on whatsapp right now so uh, they're introduced to the teams they added to those whatsapp groups then we try to help volunteers to understand the values practices standards and goals how we work right that we want to you know we, we are committed we are pursuing excellence uh, we want to work with unity so we the culture, how we work, you know, we, we try to get that across, help them understand. Most of them, if they've already been part of the church, they can observe this, they can see this. So, you know, a lot of it is already there. They can see it. Now, uh, we, as an organization, we, we want to be good in what we're doing. So, uh, uh, we don't want people to be turned off, so especially most of the people who are coming, they are professionals. They expect us also to be professional in the sense you should work properly. Otherwise, they will be the volunteers will be turned away if they see that we are not we are very bad in our work. We are, don't do our work as tough. We don't do our work properly. So we also have we maintain those standards. Uh, we clarify uh, our team policies and guidelines: what you should do, what you should not do. Uh, what is expected of them, we go through it. And then also training is provided. So, uh, you know, for different teams, uh, training is required. And so we have these trainings scheduled for them. Sometimes it's just a matter of come and watch us for the next three weeks, how things are happening. Sometimes it is more specialized training um, so that they can do well, we maintain the quality, teams are motivated, and we want to keep uh, excellence, right? Um, page 32, um, we, we need to be clear 
about the skills or abilities volunteers need for different teams. Right? So if the volunteers have those skills, they can, of course, serve in the team. If they don't have the skills, then we don't put them in that team, put them somewhere else where they can actually be useful. Right? So we can't put every volunteer in just every team. They have to have the required skills and so on. And uh, in some cases, then uh, the knowledge and skills can be imparted through training. So we give them the training they need or uh, they can learn it like on the job by actually doing the work. So we give them opportunities for learning practically how to do things. So these are things we think about, uh, provide them training. And, uh, you know, just this is some side note here, you know, training can happen through uh, lecture type training, hands-on training, there are group discussions, or somebody coaches or mentors them in what they have to do. So different ways the training can happen. Um, the team leaders also need some guidance on how to provide the training for their teams, how to care for their teams. So uh, we also invest in the volunteer team leaders so that the team leaders can take good care of their team. So that's also something we look at. You know, is, it, is this team leader taking care of doing a good job and taking care of the team? Sometimes if the team leader is failing, uh, we need to help the team leader uh, and, and help him or her do better. Uh, just as a side note, you know, there are people learn through different ways, visually or listening or by practically doing things. So we need to accommodate all of that in our uh, training. So people like to see pictures, they like to listen, they like to talk, they like to physically do things, they like to interact, they like to uh, think through, and some people may just want to work alone. So we just have to accommodate various people who like to learn in different ways. And um, how do we keep volunteers motivated? Yeah, so that's very important. So we need to help them see that they're actually doing God's work. You know, that this is not, you're not doing this for APC, you're not doing this for the just for some organization. No, you're doing this for the Lord. You're doing it for his kingdom and for his ministry. Okay? So that's very important. Also, we help them see that this is part of our vision, the church's vision. And so uh, if, if they're connected to the vision of the church, they will be you know, passionate about what they are doing. Uh, they, they're contributing towards the vision of the organization. Um, plus, they, they themselves are growing. You know, So they are learning something. They are learning some new skill. Uh, it's, they are developing their own potential. So that will also motivates them. Um, uh, it can uh, uh, give them opportunity to serve as leaders and decision makers. So again, they're developing uh, those kinds of skills, leadership skills, decision making skills. And also, generally, what we do is, if somebody is volunteering, we give always give them the preference whenever we want to hire somebody. If somebody has been a volunteer, we will prefer them. We prefer hiring them for full-time positions with the church, as opposed to somebody from outside. So that also motivates them. Hey, if I volunteer, and in the future if I want to work for church, uh, this is the this is the path that I need to go. I need to be a volunteer, and that'll help me be full-time staff for the church so uh, these are some things that really motivate them uh, to uh, in, uh, engage meaningfully okay um one important thing is we also are very careful so that volunteers are not overworked or burnt out so uh, we have to constantly watch especially if somebody is serving every sunday then there's a high chance they can feel tired. I come to church and they make me work. <laughs> so we have to be careful about that. We don't want to overwork them. So that's why we try to roster them. Like, okay, one Sunday a month or two Sundays a month, you do something. Uh, we try to roster them, unless they themselves are willing to serve uh, on more Sundays. Right. Um, now, uh, a few other things. Uh, volunteer management can be done through software. Uh, we uh, we are not using that yet, but um, in in our church management software, there is the place to have volunteer teams and volunteer teams can work. Um, but you know, our plan is eventually to have that available and um, and 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 you know manage our volunteer teams through 
uh, an online uh, church app through our church app actually um, so volunteer teams and staff relations so i mentioned this in the very beginning so this is very critical you know how volunteers and staff are working together so staff should be trained we try to tell people staff to be respectful to, to understand the volunteers and uh, like i said at the very beginning we should treat each other with respect trust and celebrate each other you know each one is doing something really good you know whether they are staff or whether they are a volunteer you're doing something good so we trust respect and celebrate each other uh, we should work together as a team so we constantly keep saying hey we are a team work as a team so on and uh, we need to communicate right so if volunteers feel that they are being left out of the communication they'll feel like hey they're not they're keeping us treating us separate so so that's one reason why we have these common whatsapp groups where we can communicate freely with volunteers so whatever information they need to know we let them know right and uh, we we uh, so they feel part of what's happening if there is a breakdown we need to detect it and address uh, the breakdown in relationship right so what are some of the symptoms that things are not going right right one is if there's uncertainty about who's supposed to do what and this this happens very often the one who says i thought the church staff will do it the church staff will say i thought those people are going to do it you know they're pointing at each other saying no they were supposed to do it though they were supposed to do it this happens so it's very important just very clearly say hey this will be done by this people this will be done by that make it very clear there's no confusion um then uh, being sometimes if, if they're not being cooperative they're going and working off on their own instead of working together then it's a sign that hey something has gone wrong or if they're not open to each other's ideas and suggestions staff don't want to listen to ideas from volunteers volunteers don't want to listen to ideas from staff then uh, that's a sign that things are not going right or if they're not sharing information with each other okay? uh, if they're not communicating directly they're going you know around each other or if they're using language like us and them it's us it is them they are doing like this we are doing then it shows that something is wrong or uh, they are um, you know protecting their own territory this is my territory don't come near you do your work so these are all indicators that things are not going right so we need to then address these things basically sit down and talk to them explain that uh, you know we need to work together as a team we need to be together and so on right so some questions you know that uh, we can ask and keep looking at you know our our volunteer team leaders doing what they're supposed to do are they following the guidelines are they you know being a good testimony are they serving passionately are they feeling burnt out do they feel any tension uh, between staff and volunteers are they feeling part of the community or are they just feeling like they are you know making them work without appreciating them okay. um so uh, last few thoughts here uh, we do review the work of volunteers I and mean, if you're watching and we as you know so you know, we maintain the same standards for staff and volunteers that's look we expect you to behave the same thing and if anything is goes wrong we, we we tell you right that things are not right um what we do is uh, we try to appreciate our volunteers throughout the year you know one is uh, every sunday we say thank you to them also once a year we have a special volunteer appreciation day that's close to our church anniversary day where we host all our volunteers for a good meal and we give them a gift so every year we think of some gift to give them 
I mean, this is just a way of saying thank you to them, right? It's not like we can pay them for their work, but just to say thank you. So we have a good meal and uh, we give them a gift. It's just to say oh, to all the volunteers, thank you. Okay? Some other thoughts, you know, people can even volunteer from different places because of uh, online facilities that are available. Uh, people can volunteer across cultures. And when we are having people volunteer across cultures, we need to sensitize them to the local culture and customs so that, uh, you know, nothing of that um, is hurt in any way. Right? So that's about what I wanted to cover on volunteers. Let's see if there are any questions, points for discussion here. Any thoughts, any questions from anybody? But volunteers engaging volunteers in charge. Um, so when it comes to hiring people, like you know, when you want to bring people for full time, when a volunteer comes, when somebody who's been serving as a volunteer comes and says, "I want to join the church full time," for me, I feel very happy about that because um, we have seen that person. We know that person very well because you know if they volunteer for two three years, we can really see you know their their uh, passion, their commitment. Their, you know we know the person very well, so it makes it very easy for us to uh, hire them or to say yeah come come us join us full time. And uh, also for them they have understood our culture, they understood what the church is about. So it's not a hasty decision, you know. It's not like uh, they've thought about it, and so, so when a volunteer comes and says, "I want to join the church full time," uh, it's always a very welcome, you know, welcome decision. Decision, as long as we have the opportunity, uh, we usually bring them on board. We take them, give them responsibility, and so on. It's much easier than when you're hiring from somebody from outside and you don't know them. Uh, you don't know how well they work or in their commitment and so on. So that's that's also a big benefit uh, of having volunteers serve because you already see them, then it's easy to uh, take them on as staff. And almost uh, all our church, not all, but many of our church staff uh, have become staff like that. They used to serve, then they joined us full time. Okay. All right, let's wrap here today. Uh, I hope these thoughts on volunteer management have been useful. You can go to the notes um, and then try and apply them in your church, in your ministry. And let's close in prayer. May I request somebody online to please close in prayer? Um, let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this morning thank you for the lessons that we learned this morning god we pray oh god that we would be able to apply this in our local congregation and also um, to help uh, people who are in need lord jesus together help us to serve you uh, in more diligent ways oh god in the days to come we pray oh god that let your kingdom be established in and through each one of us god we thank you for this time in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a good rest of the day. I'll see you again next week. God bless. Bye now.